Our first speaker is Erin Reed, PhD. Dr. Reed is a senior engineer for, for Volusia County Resources and Utilities. She has extensive experience in water quality, water treatment, spring shed and watershed analysis, as well as strategic experience as a project manager on Volusia Springs. Dr. Reed. Hi everyone, thank you for the introduction. Happy to be here and happy to present on behalf of Volusia County. So I'm going to be talking about what Volusia County Water Resources and Utilities is working on as well as different water suppliers throughout West Volusia um, in an effort to help protect our springs in this area. Um, so my presentation topics are outlined here where, you know, I'll be going over Volusia County utilities, um, the increasing demands for water, water resource challenges in West Volusia, which relate to water quality and water supply, and then uh, different project solutions that each utility would like to highlight. Um, so focusing on Volusia County utilities, um, this map here shows Volusia County as a whole, and then these purple shaded areas represent the different service areas throughout the county. And as you can see, we have some that are bigger than others. We have five main service areas. Um, we have a couple other smaller ones that we also manage. And in these service areas, we provide water and sewer treatment services. Um, we have customers for uh, reclaimed as well. Um, we look at, at reclaimed as an essential resource to help offset demands of, of groundwater withdrawals. So um, here to the right are some you know, statistics for the county. Our total county population is 553,000. Um, the Volusia County Utility um, Service has about 4, 40,000 customers. Um, and our core mission, of course, first and foremost, is to provide reliable, safe drinking water for our customers. Um, our reuse stewardship is, is based on safe disposal um, through the wastewater treatment process, um, primarily advanced wastewater treatment. We provide, we strive to provide as, as much as we possibly can, dependable and affordable services for our customers, which can you know, be challenging given all, all the demands and challenges that we face, but, but we do our absolute best to do that. And to also provide operational sustainability and financial re resiliency throughout our systems. Um, so some of the challenges that, that we face that, that Volusia County, as well as, as all the different utilities in West Volusia is increased demand based on our increasing population growth. Um, providing utility service in multiple jurisdictions can be quite challenging. Um, each one of these has its own set of, of permits and uh, unique challenges that, that we manage. And so over here in the West Volusia, um, Volusia County Utilities is faced with the challenge of Volusia Blue, Gemini Springs, DeLeon Springs, which are all outstanding Florida Springs. And then over on the other side of the county, we are working with Mosquito Lagoon and the Northern Indian River Lagoon. So uh, just talking about population um, here, this graph shows the Florida population. Um, from 1970 until now, about a 217% increase based on, on numbers that I was able to obtain. And then Volusia County population is, is even higher than that at 227%. So that just gives a little bit of perspective as to what we specifically deal with here. So these are just a sample of newspaper articles that have been um, recently released. They're available online. So first one here is on the Leon Springs dealing with septic tanks. Um, then we've got water, water everywhere where you know, our uh, water demands are becoming increasingly challenging as far as being able to you know, meet the demands of the increased population while providing water from groundwater or are, are there other sources that we can do? So, so that's very difficult. Um, and then an article over here to clean up Gemini Springs, DeBerry is looking at over uh, 2,300 septic tanks. And so um, for those of you that are familiar with septic 
system retrofit, it is very expensive. And so trying to come up with solutions that make sense is, is one thing that we're dealing with now. So utility solutions overall, and this is not just for Volusia County utilities, but all of the West Volusia utilities, we, we work pretty closely together, um, which is which is great, um, but we deal with conservation and demand management, operational efficiency. Volusia County Utilities in particular has utilized the advanced meter infrastructure technology on all of our water meters, which um, is, is really good for water conservation because we are able to um, remotely monitor water use. And if there's something that I guess you could say triggers an alarm, for a customer using too much water, our customer service is notified and they're able to contact that particular user and you know, go through a, a step process of trying to diagnose the problem and get their water use back on track. Um, improve citizen awareness through education. We work with our um, environmental management division quite closely on trying to get the word out to the public about water conservation and water quality, um, enhance groundwater recharge, develop alternative water supplies. This is particularly um, related to our, our reclaimed water supplies that we um, maintain and also try to grow. And then lastly, um, upgrading wastewater treatment plants to remove nutrients. This would be converting them to um, advanced treatment or, or condensing them and consolidating them into a uh, more effective treatment at one point. Um, and then expanding the sewer service area to eliminate septic tanks. So these pie charts are, um, they represent the different nutrient loads in the three springs located here in West Volusia. And this was, these graphs were produced by the state, um, Florida Department of Environmental Protection. And each one of these pie charts is listed in the Springs Basin Management Action Plan document, which is available online. Um, but just to kind of go over here, you know, looking at Blue Spring, and I'll go into more detail um, throughout the presentation, but looking at Blue Spring, um, you know, you can see the big green area is septic systems. De Leon Springs has a mix of farm fertilizer. There's also septic tanks there as well. Um, Gemini Springs is largely dominated by septic systems as well as urban turf grass fertilizer. Um, and going back on, on these pie charts and why they're so useful from the state standpoint in working with the lo local um, stakeholders is that it helps to develop feasible restoration strategies. And one thing that, that I've learned and just about anybody that works on these is that the solution is not just one entity, but it's a combination of everybody working together to reach the common goal. So, Zoning in on Volusia Blue Spring, this pie chart over here shows septic systems at 54% um, contribution to nutrient loading and groundwater. Um, wastewater treatment facilities are at 12%. So, so we, you know, utilities have been recognized as part of the problem. So the strategy, and, and this was released back in that pie chart was released back in 2018 with, with the document of, of um, you know, the remediation, you know, sources, projects that would be used to reduce that loading. And so the strategy that we used is um, to become part of the solution. We upgraded one of our, our plants in, in that uh, spring shed to advanced wastewater treatment to bring the nutrient loading in our discharge um, significantly lower so that we wouldn't be contributing as much um, nitrogen in the wastewater discharge. Um, we also um, expanded the facility so that it could accept more wastewater flow into it so that we could treat more water, more wastewater. Um, and that's been completed. And then uh, the hydraulic modeling and interlocal cooperation is an ongoing process. 
So we are working with Orange City and City of Deltona on um, infrastructure as far as wastewater reclaimed, you know, working to expand these areas holistically so that we can, you know, work together towards that common goal of, of reducing nutrients. Um, and then uh, regional economic development goals, just trying to, you know, any sort of development that happens, really try to be mindful and, and smart with it. And then um, here, you know, as, as listed as step three, the wastewater remediation plan. And so that deals with septic systems. And, you know, that's something that we're really going to be hitting hard on next year. And that's working in, in all of the throughout the whole spring shed and working with, with different cities. Um, so our biggest advocacy is with the Blue, or I'm sorry, the Blue Spring Alliance, Save the Manatee, West Volusia Audubon, those are just to name a few. Um, and so county needs at this point for this spring shed is to increase wastewater and biosolids treatment capacity. That's something that we're actively working towards as well as increasing um, reclaimed water supply and storage. So our, our goal, um, even for next year to get started on design, is to expand our facility, which is advanced wastewater treatment, to bring in more flow. And so it'll go from 2.7 to 5 MGD. So this is a map of some of the things that we've done. So um, I know it might be a little bit tough to see you know, the detail, but the main points of this map is to show that yellow star is the location of our um, advanced wastewater treatment facility. Um, we have decommissioned some of our smaller treatment facilities throughout the spring shed that didn't treat uh, as to high of a standard. We've decommissioned them and sent the flow to our advanced uh, treatment facility. Uh, we are also working with city of Deltona to possibly accept flow from one of their treatment facilities. Um, so that will bring even more nutrient removal to the spring shed. So, you know, as you can see from this map, we're all over working with whoever we need to work with to, to try to meet the goal. Um, so this is the Southwest Regional Wastewater Treatment Facility. It's located in DeBerry. This is the one that um, has the advanced wastewater treatment. Uh, we've got, um, you know, we're increasing up to five MGD. We have plans to um, replace one of our existing um, belt presses with a solar drying facility that will reduce land applications significantly up to 85%. And then we will add another reclaimed uh, ground storage tank to this area to be able to supply even more reclaimed water to our service area, thus reducing groundwater withdrawal demands. Um, it's an expensive project. The estimated cost is right around 30 million. Um, and our funding partners, we have been working with DEP and St. John's River Water Management District. Um, through them, this kind of project would not be possible just because of the expense. And as I mentioned before, we try to keep our expenses low to our customers. So we try to, to you know, meet the goals of the state while, while keeping costs low and reasonable. So the project benefits of this is Volusia Blue and Gemini Springs environmental water quality, um, expanding capacity, addressing water supply by conserving groundwater withdrawal, and then controlling existing, existing customer rates. And so these documents that I have here um, in the picture are the two different BMAP, um, sorry, for uh, Gemini Springs, it's the BMAP document. And then also for Blue Blue, it's the total ma maximum daily load document. If anyone is interested, they're available on the state's website. And that kind of gives the outline of, of the goals for nutrients that we need to meet in the spring shed. So City of DeLand, they are working on a Northeast reclaimed storage tank and pump house. This picture was taken just this month. And uh, the project supports the retrofit of four subdivisions within the City of DeLand, and it's, it's bringing them onto reclaimed water. So again, it's reducing the groundwater withdrawal. 
So this tank here is a two MGD reclaim storage tank and pump house. The pump house is intended to maintain pressure throughout the system um, because it is pretty far from their facility. So they have to um, account for that. And it they have um, SCADA involved in the system so that they can communicate with the main system um, over at the treatment plant to fill and draw down the tank as needed. Um, they received a 25% grant from St. John's River Water Man Management District and FTEP for um, up to $3.8 million for the project. Currently, it's at 30% complete and scheduled to be completed in June of 2022. And then over in Orange City, they are currently in construction. They've got a few projects going on. It's the Holly Avenue Septic to Sewer Connection Project. And this includes commercial, residential, city parks, admin building. Um, this is funded by legislative grant and uh, FTEP 319H non-point source grants. And it's about 1 million uh, project costs. And then they have a reclaim water main extension at Monastery Road, and that's funded by the city utilities enterprise fund and cost share. And that's at 387 million or a thousand. Um, in design, at one of their water plants, they are adding a green sand filter to improve the water quality, um, water distribution improvements. Um, they've received funds for those. They've also got another CRA um, septic to sewer project, which goes down their main corridor down 1792. And then industrial drive infrastructure improvements where they're doing a water main replacement reclaim water service extension and drainage improvements. And the city of Deltona has um, a few projects going on and the map here corresponds to the shape um, associated with the project. So over um, in the central portion of it, they're doing a reclaimed water main extension and a 20 year old subdivision. They're adding 229 new reuse customers to um, offset groundwater withdrawal. Um, over on, also in the center by Lake Monroe, this project is called the Alexander Rapid Infiltration Basin um, 4B River Intake Project. And so what this project entails is pulling water from Lake Monroe and using that as reuse. So again, um, offsetting groundwater withdrawal. And they're um, going to be starting off with uh, taking four MGD and then eventually going to 12 MGD at build out. So that's a great project. Um, over on the east side of the city, they're doing the Eastern Water Reclamation Facility expansion, going from one MGD to one and a half MGD. And that is, um, looks like it, they're preparing the bid for that. And then Deltona Lakes Fisher water reclamation facility, um, they have the triangle on the map and that corresponds to Volusia County Utilities Advanced Wastewater Treatment um, facility that they are going to be set, that we are working with them on getting their flow from one of their aging treatment facilities over to that plant. So that's the last project that's listed. That plant's 50 years old. Um, they are estimating to continue operations for up to five years and then ultimately decommissioning the facility <clears throat> and then working with us to bring the inflow over to Southwest. So over in Gemini Springs, which is in DeBerry, septic systems are a major contributor of nutrient loading in the, in the spring shed. Um, they're at 41%. So the strategy as I mentioned before, is to expand our wastewater treatment facility that would serve that area. Um, it's an ongoing process in design and negotiations. Um, the remediation plan, which is a document that outlines our plan for nutrient reduction, it has been complete. The plan is to convert over 2000 septic systems to sanitary sewer to reduce that TN loading. And we have been working very closely with city of DeBerry um, as they've been spearheading this project to um, convert 
the, uh, an area of DeBerry over to sewer and we would be the sewer provider. Um, I listed a hyperlink here where um, it goes to the city of DeBerry's website where you could get information on you know, the current status of the project, uh, state documents, um, anything really that, that you would want to know about this project and, and where it currently stands is located on their website. So um, they've been an, a huge advocate um, in, in, in helping meet goals for Gemini Springs and improving the water quality there. Um, also Gemini Springs Alliance. So as far as making this, this project a reality, um, as I mentioned, we would need to increase our wastewater treatment facility capacity to be able to accept more flow. We've got to be able to increase um, reclaimed water supply and storage. And then we've got to go through the design of the retrofit that has not been done yet. So design of the retrofit is, is still, it's the very first step. Um, and of course, funding and then uh, construction. So this specifically is the area. <clears throat> so this map shows um, the blue line is what's called the priority focus area. And that's established by FDEP. And that really just kind of is, you know, the zoned in area of where improvement needs to be made. The green star in the map is Gemini Spring. And so that yellow shaded area is, is the area that's part of the remediation plan. So over 2000 parcels impacted and the factors that are being considered for any project improvement is distance from the spring, existing infrastructure, lot size, density, um, nitrogen loading, estimated cost, stakeholder input and growth projections. So up into the northern part of West Volusia is De Leon Spring. And this pie chart looks a little bit different. Um, septic systems are at 14%, but when you really look at the, the focus area, which in DeBerry was that, that blue boundary, but here in De Leon Spring, when you look at that smaller area, septic systems actually have a greater impact. And so um, there has been a remediation plan put in place for De Leon Spring as well. Um, and that's in progress and it involves um, septic systems. And in this area, it's not so much based on a retrofit of existing septic systems, but the prevention of new septic systems from coming in. As, um, as you look at, at the, the spring shed area up in De Leon, and that's the next slide, when you look at the aerial, you see all of the, the vacant land. And so we want to really try to um, be proactive in this area. So we want to prevent the proliferation of additional septic systems near the spring. Biggest partners here are DEP, City of DeLand, Volusia County School Board. So even though Volusia County Utilities is, is currently leading the efforts in this, we are um, uh, uh, in coordination with City of DeLand as they will become the utility service provider. Um, and so the design that's currently in progress is to um, add in three miles of wastewater infrastructure. And our one of our biggest advocates here is the DeLeon Springs Community Association. We are very grateful to them and the efforts that they have put into making the community aware of the, the huge benefit of this project. So this is the map here. Um, this green, the green shaded area going along 1792 is where the wastewater infrastructure would go three miles of it. And it's really, you know, a trunk line that uh, will be available to connect and it'll go to city of Deland's um, wastewater system. So some of the areas here in this map, uh, up at number one is Deland Springs State Park. Um, Deland Spring itself is the water drop by the number one symbol. Uh, number two, on the map is a proposed new development. So um, again, we wanna really try to get that infrastructure in so that these new developments that come in actually connect to centralized wastewater treatment rather than, than septic tanks. Um, and then we've got Triangle Estates, Northern Point of Connection, which is McKinnis Elementary School. That's going to be where 
the force main that that we're designing would end. Um, and then this southern point of connection down at the number six is where it would connect to a, a sewer pipe. So again, this is prevention of additional septic systems, also known as OSTDS, near the spring. And that satisfies the, the total maximum daily load document that DEP put out. Um, and then also it helps to keep the spring flow where it needs to be and, and maintain that spring flow. Um, you know, if we're able to, to bring water through there as well, which is also under design, then um, it's that many less drinking water wells that are put in the ground and taking flow from the spring. So the service provider would be City of DeLand. Um, county utility needs is additional funding for the wastewater infrastructure and, and the water infrastructure. Um, our initial estimate of the design cost was before uh, COVID where the, the price of materials really increased. And so we were shocked to get the latest um, uh, opinion of construction costs, I guess you could say, from the engineer. I mean, it was just, it was, it was more than double what we expected. So um, it's far more, we look at it as this project is far more cost effective to construct now rather than to go in later and retrofit. And that is all I have. Um, this this um, picture here we like to show because, you know, when the well runs dry, we will know water's worth. And so, um, you know, we're trying to protect our, our water resources um, with, with the limited resources that we have. So um, that is all I have for my presentation. I'll take questions. Thank you very much, Erin. That was excellent and uh, very detailed. We've got a number of questions in the Q&A box. Um, the, I'll start in order. What is Volusia County's cost estimate for each septic tank conversion? I realize this is an estimate with many variables. Thank you. Okay, um, that is a good question. So in DeBerry, I don't have that exact number, um, but what, what our philosophy is um, to do with DeBerry in particular is there will be homeowner costs, but you know try to keep that at a minimum that, that wouldn't be any more than what um, the cost would be to replace their septic system, which would be a requirement that the state would have to do anyway. If you have the conventional septic system and you're located in a priority focus area, then you're required to upgrade anyway. So we try, we're gonna, we are, striving to keep that cost to the homeowner the same. Okay, great. Uh, the next one is, what is the relationship between St. John's River Water Management District and the county utility? So we deal with the water management district primarily on a water supply side. Okay. Um, They're our permitting agency. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Um, the next question, your presentation estimates in 2018 that septic systems contribute 54% to the Volusia spring flow, 22% turf grass fertilizer. Do you have any similar recent data for septic, turf grass, et cetera, percent contribution of phosphorus and nitrogen nitrates to surface water bodies? I would have to check the BMAP document. Um, it depends on what was identified as the impairment to that water body. Mm -hmm. So if phosphorus was not identified as significant enough, then that pie chart wouldn't be created. Okay. Um, and here's one. I live off Hontoon Road in, Blue, in the Blue Springs spring shed. Because this Volusia spring seems to have the largest amount of septic problems, are there any plans for septic to sewer projects like what is starting in the Gemini area? Will there be monies available and from where? And I think you spoke to that earlier in your presentation. Yeah, we have not gotten as far in the Blue Spring spring shed as we have with, um, with Gemini but we will have to take the same steps. So I don't know any specifics as to retrofit plans. Okay. Um, 
I have a septic tank, what can I do? Is there something I can add once a month or whatever to minimize problems for the environment? So um, the conventional septic systems is what most people have. And, um, you know, depending on where you're located in a spring shed, I, you know, I can't speak so much to septic systems. I'm, I'm no expert in them, but, you know, just maintaining them. And then also depending on your location, um, you know, the state's got a couple different options for advanced septic systems um, that could be installed. And um, there's research and information available on those different types and what the owner would need to do to maintain them and make sure they're working properly. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, is there any solution that focuses on um, reducing the amount of toxic runoff from fertilizers, specifically into land? Um, awareness at this point, I think, is the biggest solution. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. That that's a tough one. It is, and there's the, there's the water, uh, there's the fertilizer ordinance, but. Um, it's kind of on the honor system. Correct me if I'm wrong there. It's not, there's not real enforcement that I know of. And it, it would yeah. be hard to even wrap your head around how you would go about enforcing that. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know so much about the fertilizer part of it, but. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have another question here. Um, so, oh, uh, about the biosolids treatments, because that's mm -hmm. a question a lot of people have. Um, and that in your capacity for that and, and going to uh, increasing the capacity by going to solar drying. Do you have a location designated for where that will be transported and dried? It would be at our Southwest Advanced Wastewater Treatment Facility. Okay, so it's right on the property there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, okay. Um, and you were talking about um, working interlocally with um, the cities in the west part of the county, which is uh, which is a wonderful uh, thing to be able to point to for, for the rest of the county. Um, and then the, and going from the commercial hookup, and then you can go the commercial hookup, and then spread out to um, spread out to residences. How do you? How has that become possible? What what has worked in getting everybody to kind of pull together on that? Process? Up in DeLeon, um, the main thing I noticed with DeLeon Springs, and again, um, big thanks go out to the DeLeon Springs Community Association. Um, th they want, you know, it's, it's commercial and, and most of the homeowners, not all, but most of them want to have, you know, quote unquote life brought into their community. So, you know, it wasn't, it, 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 it was surprisingly very welcomed there in that area. And we're not, you know, we're not forcing anything. We're just, we're, we're, we're building that trunk line so that, you know, there it's a little bit different because um, it's more of a prevention strategy. Mm -hmm. um, and the cost for being proactive in new communities um, versus retrofit, is there a huge cost differential there? Yes. Okay, yes. so it's easier to get it done before the, yeah. the houses start going up. Excellent. Correct. Okay, great. Um, and I think that's all the questions we have here and I will just double check. And then, so I will thank you very much, Erin. That was a great oh, You're welcome, my really pleasure. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank, and thank you. you will, you're welcome.